Welcome back everybody. Today's multi-tool is the Gerber Center Drive. I bought this thing like two years ago. It served it's it served me well, but I have found it better. And I'll explain some of the reasons why I think this tool is better. So here we go into what it has and why I think you probably shouldn't waste your money on it. First off, a good thing. This has like one of the largest knife blades on a multi-tool. I used some uh, French's mustard to put a Hammond line on there. A little personal customizing I did. Great knife. It does its job. Great beater blade. Solid. Hard to break. I love it. It's This is one of the few good things about this tool. Outside accessible knife blade. Let me clean out the paper again. What do I want in a multi-tool? Knife, scissors, pliers, file, bit driver, saw. This has all but the saw and the scissors. So, this is a viable multi-tool. If, if any multi-tool has uh, like less than like two things on this list, I'm not that happy with it. If it has, you know, three or more, I'm happy. As, as a multi-tool. Previous video I did, I did a Boker Plus, and that's a great multi-tool. It's a fine line. Knife blade. One of the largest outboard knife blades on a multi-tool. Good usable design, decent, came sharp, easy to sharpen, wonderful. The namesake of the tool, center drive. The screwdriver lines up with the center of the multi-tool, making screwing jobs a lot easier. And it takes normal quarter inch bits that you can buy pretty much anywhere. That's no, it's not, not hard. It doesn't use prior, um, it does not use specialty bits like with Leatherman that only work on Leatherman tools or some intervening thing that you can use to make a middle ground between a normal tool and Leatherman tool. This just, use, this just gets down and dirty with the simple stuff. This is just a screwdriver. And they do a good job at that. Great tool. I love the one-hand pliers that slip out through the handle. They're great pliers. Here's where we start getting into the bad of the multi-tool. You try to crimp this down as tight as you can, and you'll still have a little bit of a gap there at the tip. And considerable, not a lot, but considerable play between the plier heads there. That's to be expected for the way the tool functions. Like, it cannot be this slippy, slidey tool and not have some gimmick to it. Like, I, I understand the limitations of the tool. Why it behaves the way it does. My biggest gripe are the carbide cutters. I have not used these things that much, although when I have used them, they work wonderfully, but I'm afraid of cutting anything hard because these will shatter. It's like graphite on your pencil. It, it, it breaks and crumbles like breadcrumbs if you do something wrong with it. Great cutter, not fan of it. I do like that it's triangular and that you can pivot those for new sides even if one gets dull. That was genius. Just make it out of something else other than carbide. In here we have storage for one extra bit. I have all my other bits accounted for, but you could just take a bit and just stuff it in there and it stays in there. <clears throat> it came with a Phillips and a flat. It had the flat in there, carried the Phillips out there. I don't know where the flat one's gone. Uh, going to the inside, other side, file. Great file. I love the file. File's good. No edge file, but it's a good file. It came out more aggressive than I thought it would. We have an awl. One of the better awls on a multi-tool. Good awl. We have cat's paw tool, whatever they called it. Eh, not as good as you think. It's okay, but it's not great. I, I might do a whole separate video on why this thing comes short, but... Eh, not great. And probably the worst tool on here is the serrated edge. That thing came dull as a butter knife. 
I had to spend a long time resharpening that to get it anything close to usable. Gerber, your quality control sucked on that. That was a horrible, almost blunt, serrated edge. That was not good. All these little inside tools lock with a little thing that you push back and flip them in. All the outside tools lock with a liner lock. Twink. Now, why is this tool a bad tool? Why is my camera tipping? Um, why is this tool a bad tool? Well, let's pull out two other tools that I think are better than this. This one is, I'm not a fan of, but it's a good tool. This one's my favorite tool. Why is this one terrible? I just don't think that it's packaged well. I think they could have, I, I would have rathered less inside tools to make, excuse me, to make room for a better layout for the plier heads or something. I don't, it's, it's great for being one-handed on three things. One-handed pliers, one-handed knife, one-handed screwdriver. People also complain about not being able to do the screwdriver. You just push with your fingers underneath. It's one-handed. And then you just take your middle finger, push down on the liner lock, and close it. People, I can, people complained that they hated that it was on this side and not that side because they couldn't get to it. I'm like, um, have you fidgeted with this yet? It's very one-handed. I don't see the issue. But... The plier heads. I think the, I think the biggest one is the plier head is just too much. I mean, for the shape and everything, it's like they're trying to stylize it rather than make it functional. And this, both of these two are more functional than this. That's a fat tip. And I'm fine with a fatter tip, but this does not close. Like, I've got this thing pinched down, and there is still a gap in the head like that's not good I don't I yeah. I work on fine stuff a lot and I need that like be able to pull hairs out with this thing these two can do that this one can't so that's that's the plier head issue that I think is a problem next is like you know most stuff is, is indoor tools if you want the accoutrement tools everything is indoors and funkily accessible like the tool does not open very far and it can you could probably end up snagging trying to get your tools out and i think that would be a bit of an annoyance for a lot of people whereas this you could open it up farther to get your indoor tools and this everything is outdoors everything on this is an outboard tool everything is accessible also Everything on this is a lower grade carbon steel that rusts quick. I've had to do some stuff to keep this guy from rusting. These are known to rust pretty quick on the indoor tools. But this is absolutely phenomenal on maintenance. You have to do next to nothing to keep this thing looking good. It's a good this is a good tool. Do not get me wrong. There's some people. This is their favorite multi-tool. That's fine. But if you don't know multi-tools and you're looking to buy a new tool, I wouldn't suggest you start off on this. This is too funky of a tool. This is too unique, too different from every other tool for someone who's never had a multi-tool and is wanting to start. Not don't, don't get this one. I would rather get this one that I reviewed poorly for what it was. I would rather you get this. I would highly recommend you get one of these. Get a Swiss tool, whether it's a Spirit or the Jumbo Swiss tool like this. Go for one of those. I just don't think this makes the cut anymore. With some of the advances that we have in multi-tools like the Leatherman Free Series, um, some new tools your Leatherman's planning to come out later this year with like outboard tools and better bit drivers and stuff. That sounds cool. With the availability of the Swiss tools, I would in I would rather see you get a skill Leatherman Skeletal than this. 
yeah, well, let's let's use let's use the Skeletal for an example. I don't have one, but the Leatherman Skeletal, it is pliers, knife, bit driver, and it folds up like most multi tools. This is kind of this is a small style, but let's use this. You'd have the full size bit driver in here. This the the Leatherman. Skeletal is a considerably bigger tool. It's smaller than this, but bigger than this. But it has the same shape as this. So just imagine with me here. You have a the, uh, interchangeable bit driver here that you could have running down the middle pretty much when you open that up. You would have good pliers. You would have an outboard knife blade, one hand opening, just like this one. It, you know, the skeletal has a one-hand knife blade right there on the outside. It's got this, and it's got a cool carabiner like this little guy does. And I think for $10 less, $20 less about now, this tool is going for about $90 at most places right now. The Leatherman Skeletal is going for $70. And I think it does the job of knife blade, screwdriver, plier heads, a thousand times better than this. Save 20 bucks and don't buy this, buy a Skeletool. I just don't think this cuts it anymore. In the world of multi-tools, with the things that have come out the last few years, two years ago, this was great. Two years later, today, there's better choices for you out there. Thank you for listening to my rant. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all again next time.